Hey ladies, I am so happy to make this video for y'all. I cannot tell you how excited I am to make ASMR again or get back on my channel again and check in with y'all again. <sighs> Those of y'all that have reached out to me, whether it be through DMs on Instagram, comments, um, even on Facebook, whatever, I cannot tell y'all how much it means to me, um, that you guys care enough to reach out to me, um, like I said in my community post, I really created this channel so y'all would have a place to feel safe and secure and know there was no judgment and no bullying and that I was not going to tolerate that shit in real life or in my comments or in my videos or anything like that um and you guys have kind of turned it around on me and made this a safe space for me and I just want to let y'all know how much that means to me and how big of a deal that is to me I'm not someone that confides in people much which is so weird when you think about it that like I don't sit down and have some of these conversations like some of the stories that y'all know my own family doesn't even know and it's just it's so weird that I can sit down and film in front of my phone and feel so secure so I just want to thank you guys for that um I know, you know, obviously, I got hair in my face. I know, obviously, anybody it's attached can watch YouTube videos and comment and say whatever negative thing they want. But I've never tolerated negative comments on my videos um, towards me or towards anyone else. This is just not where you bring your negativity. And you guys have really done that for me as well. And I just want y'all to know that it does not go unnoticed. And how much I appreciate it. And how much I love each and every one of you people. Y'all are not subscribers. <laughs> y'all are people. You are, there's a person behind that subscription. And I will never forget that. And um, that's just really important to me. So I'll stop right in my mouth now. No, I won't, but I'll s switch gears. Um, so this video is just going to be talking a little bit about where I've been, what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, and plans for the future as far as this channel. Um, because I've talked about my addiction, and you guys have heard my story, but... There are people out there that have stories as well. So something that I, I'm kind of doing this bass backwards, but who's really surprised? The kind of thing that I would really like to see in the future as far as this channel, I absolutely want to stick with ASMR. I absolutely, absolutely want to stick with that as my, um, my niche, if you will. Um, but at the same time, I want you guys, like, if you've ever been an addict, if you've ever experienced something traumatic in your life, um, I want you guys to feel, to be able to tell your stories as well. And what I mean by that is, um, you guys can email me, you can message me, you can comment if you would like, but that's a little, um public so but if you have something that you feel like you just want to share with other people whether it be anonymous anonymously or not um you, you have something on your heart you have something that lays on you or something that bothers you or something that you feel like you need to heal from I want y'all to feel comfortable enough for 
me to tell your story because I will do it in the best way that I know how. So if you feel like you've been through something that can help other people or you are going through something that you need support on um, along those lines, I would absolutely love to tell some of y'all's stories. And that way you guys can share in some of the support that I get from this channel, if that makes sense. I really want to share it with y'all because it's one thing to have, like, your family behind you. And some people, you know, don't even have that. Um, but to know that there are strangers out there in the world that are sitting in front of their phones or their computers or laying in bed or having insomnia, having panic attacks, um, knowing that your story is going to reach those kind of people, people that may be going through the same thing, or people that can maybe help you through what you've gone through or are going through, whatever. I just, I want y'all to be able to feel the amount of love that's on this channel as much as I do, if that makes sense, okay? I feel like I'm talking like this. <laughs> And I don't really know why, I just kind of ended up with my arms in the shot and I was doing a little T-Rex thing. Anyway, so, the last video that I made for you guys, I was, um, I was in a very bad place, but I knew I was in a very bad place, so that's really the first step to getting out of a bad place, and I know that sounds crazy, but... You don't change anything if you don't think anything needs to change. Does that make sense? Like, you don't fix a problem that you don't see or you don't believe is there. So, I mean, I know myself well enough to know that I was in crisis and I needed something drastic. What else, you know? Of course, whatever I need is drastic. Um, so, what ended up happening was I went through a slew of outpatient programs here where I'm from. And I'm from Portsmouth. And if, if you're from the other side of the country and you don't know about the shithole that is Portsmouth, count yourself lucky. Um... <laughs> Portsmouth used to be a great town, don't get me wrong, it used to be great, um, but now it's just rehabs and addicts and normal people. There's like a really, not normal, but how would you describe someone, like someone that's a non-addict that conforms to society that has a job and you know and then you have like people that are mentally ill it's just it's just not a good place anymore and it's really sad um because even when I was younger it was better than what it is now but anyway a lot of the local programs are what I call ship them in, ship them out. And what I mean by that is they are revolving doors. And this is what I did not want. Um, I did not want a revolving door. Um, there is trauma in my past that I need to work through. And I knew I need to work through it, but I have never been able to work through it in a group setting. Um, nine times out of ten, when you enter a drug rehabilita rehabilitation program, whether it's inpatient or outpatient, one of the main things that they focus on is um, group therapy. And group therapy is extremely helpful for a lot of people. 
I just don't happen to be one of them. Um, and don't get me wrong, I think group therapy has been um, beneficial to me in the past, but I've worked through a lot of things at this point in my life. And the things that I still have left, the things that I still need to work through, the things that I still need to deal with, like where my PTSD comes from, and you guys know some of the stories, but that was my life for a good 13 years. Like, you have to remember that was like, shit like that was every day, and that really takes a toll on your soul, and I, like, I don't mean that to sound cute, it really takes a toll on the person you are. And I didn't realize that I had PTSD. I thought of PTSD. My dad is a Vietnam veteran. And when I hear PTSD and flashbacks and things like that, I thought of things like my dad experienced. I didn't realize that was that what I was experiencing, the nightmares and the... Oh, I wonder if all leads back to my PTSD and what gave me PTSD. And those are things that I need to work through, but they're not something I can work through in a group setting. And let me, the reason why I can't work through it in a group setting is because I have found that the turnover in these places is extremely high. So what I mean by that is... I can go to group Monday and start, you know, spilling my guts, and then by Thursday, it's a completely new group of people in there, and they don't know me from the next person, do you know what I mean? And it's like, it, turn, it turns into more of an individualized session in front of people. And I'm not comfortable working through some of my... Um, some of my past with a group full of people. I'm just not. And so my psychiatrist has really worked to, and my counselors have really, there's like a team. I have a team. <laughs> you know, there's, but there's like three people working together trying to get my head on straight. Which is crazy to think about, but there's a psychiatrist, a psychologist, and a drug counselor, so that's why there's three. But it's just, it's funny to think that there's all these people trying to coordinate my treatment, but it makes me feel like a nut. But I've noticed such a difference with the meds that I've been on. My psychiatrist changed my meds. It was like six or seven days after I made my last video and psych meds don't work quick. That's just a downfall of psych meds. It takes a while for them to get the chemicals in your brain to fire correctly. So, um, right about the five week mark. After I had been on my new meds, I started feeling very, very different. I started feeling, um, like me. <laughs> I started feeling like a person again. I started feeling, I started thinking clearer. And I realized how desperate my situation was. So, I'm on Suboxone at this point. That's not something that I want long term, but that's where I'm at right now. So, basically, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was. Um, some people would consider it clean, um, but I smoke, so some people don't consider that clean. Like, everyone has their own considerations of what 
clean is and what sober is, but um, I think if you, I'm not doing op opiates, like I'm not shooting heroin or fentanyl or any other type of opioid like that, or I'm trying to avoid the D word, but of drugs, period. Um, then I was making progress. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm kind of at right now. But, um, my psychiatrist ended up getting me to the point where getting my counseling sessions to the point where I didn't have to work in group. I just had more individuals and I was completely fine with that. I'm fine working through my trauma with a counselor. I'm not fine working my trauma through with a counselor in front of other people. And I don't mean to be difficult. I don't mean to like, I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm just letting you know what is and isn't beneficial to me. And so it's worked out so far. Um, my counseling, I'm only on like my fourth session. I have my fourth session this week. Um, I also have my psychiatrist, like, I just, um, it's a lot. I have a lot of appointments and a lot of, like, I have to be at this place. I have to have this done. I have to focus on this this week, like, um, and the reason being is, you know, my psychiatrist isn't like what you see in the movies, like, she doesn't lay me on a couch. We don't have, like, heart-to-heart -heart talks. She diagnoses mental illness. She is not the counselor. Does that make sense? Like, she writes the medications. And the counselor is the counselor. So. And that was her recommendation. So that's what I did. Um, but... This combination of meds has worked better than anything has in a long time. And I'm sure getting, you know, the opiates that I was using out of my system helped me think clearer as well. But it was right at, even after the opiates were out of my system, it was right at, like, the five-week mark that I was on my meds. And I really started noticing a difference which is normal, most of them take about six weeks to be effective. So, yeah, that's just where I'm at with everything, and, um, that's what has been going on, and where I'm at presently, and I told you guys a little bit of what I want for the future as far as this channel, but for me personally, I just, um, I don't know if I mentioned that I was in college, on, doing online college, but that's something that I would really like to stick with. Um, I'm not going to mention the name of the school or anything, but, um, that's something that I would like to stick with and something that I would love to be able to do in the future to be able to help. I don't know. Living with a mental illness is just, um, it's not easy. It's not, um, and living with several is not easy either. And because you can't see my illnesses, you can't look at me and say, oh, she's bipolar, she's got anxiety, she's got PTSD, she's got insomnia, she, like, you can't run down my list of diagnoses, um, by looking at me, and sometimes that makes it harder, and, I mean, 
maybe if I had anxiety written on my forehead, it wouldn't make a difference. I, I honestly don't know because I've never had a physical disability, so I don't know what that's like, so I'm not going to speculate on how someone with physical disabilities feels. I just know how I feel. Does that make sense? Like, I can't say how other people feel. I just know. I, I can't. I haven't experienced those things, so I don't think it's fair for me to articulate um, how it would feel. That's just not my place. So, but I, I do know what living with mental illness is like, and it's, And it's such a, what's striking is the crossover between addiction and mental illness and the area, this area in particular with addiction, um, Southern Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, areas of Virginia, um, Appalachia is just wrought with opioid abuse right now. And if you're, if you live somewhere else in the country, maybe you don't see that there. I don't know. I don't know where all of you live. Does that make sense? Well, if you live in another part of the world, you obviously don't know how this area was targeted for opiates. It was just, um, but I won't get into that in this video. That's whole another can of worms that I'm just not going to get into right now, but, um, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy problem around here, and it's something that I have, I feel like I've known at least 50 people that have died from opiates, at least. And I'm not talking like I knew them super close, but I have known, I know just about everybody around here, and I have known at least 50 people that have died from opiate abuse, all stemming from things that happened decades ago. And it's just really hard to watch people that you know, your classmates, your friends that you grew up with, the boy that I grew up with that I was best friends with growing up, he lived directly across the street from me, he just died a couple years ago, like, he was only a few months older than me, my best friend Robin died, my friend Sarah died, I've talked about them in other videos, um, but like, I've lost several people close to me, but I've known like 50 people that have died and it's just it's so sad it's so sad because there was so much potential in some of these people and it's just like a whole bunch of bright lights just being turned out I didn't snap right being turned out and so anyway, I didn't mean to get so, like, melancholy on you, but it's something that is just something I see every single day of my life, and something I'm going to have to deal with every day for the rest of my life, and, yeah, so it's very present in my mind what's going on around where I live, where my son lives, where m my hometown is, um, so, but the fact that y'all have thought enough of this channel, of me, of my ASMR to reach out to me and make sure I was doing okay, um, really means more than I could ever articulate, so it just means a hell of a lot, 
and I just wanted to make a 25 video vi minute video we're into hard for me today 25 minute video to let you know that I don't know if you heard that crack but that was my elbow um no I just really wanted to check in with you guys and I wanted you guys to know that I was okay and I want to know how you are I want to know how you guys are doing so I love you guys so much and thank you so much for being here with me like it means more than I could ever tell you. Bye, babies.